Roberts' motive in the shooting from his apartment is unknown. The Daily News website reported windows at the apartment and the door leading to an outside porch were damaged. Police taped off the apartment after the arrest. Former KRFP disc jockey Sierra Valentine told KRFP in an interview this afternoon she knows the shooter as a neighbor who has been bothering her for some time and says he tried to kill her Hello, everybody. early this morning. Uh, this is a really okay, we are with Sierra Valentine. big topic tonight um, that we wanted to talk about. I wanted to have this to playing in the background. This, this is the local morning. news that we have. Um, uh, well, it started a lot longer than early incident. this morning ago. Uh, uh, about a year or so ago. Uh, uh, this Basically, guy lost his job because he had too much uh, diarrhea and he was a know, travel nurse. What, what we're going to try to do is talk I've about... I've ever learned about him until uh, recently. Uh, he got fired from Gritman because really he had too much diarrhea. And uh, question, he kept telling me that. Uh, and uh, he made me feel very and, uncomfortable. Not because of that, but because he was... Literally trying and to come over and talk to me when I was clearly not I'm wanting not to talk to him. And then he tried to give me booze. And I said, no, I don't want that. Take it away. So, and guys, he hold on got a second. really offended because I didn't want to take his out. So, uh, if you're listening to what's going on right now. Uh, got his ego hurt a bit. He tried to talk to me know, a few other times. and I Basically, was very this is a really and bad situation. Um, we and have... Uh, essentially murders going on in our town people with guns shooting in the street and and we have absolutely no one out on the street right now I I just walked the street and there's no one out there Uh, and uh, what you're hearing right now is uh, what happened just recently and uh, call 911. What I want to do I is really rethink about everything. Um, I didn't know what to say to them, so uh, I put it on the phone, I handed him the phone, I went and Basically, got what, got what we really need to think about is, is a really different way of thinking about what happened uh, in all of our towns, no matter where we are around the world. Uh, and basically, uh, what, what, what happened here is that there was a an incident uh, that happened over here that, uh, in our uh, town, you know, and uh, the believe it or not, uh, the it turns uh, out that Jesus Christ lives uh, right over yeah, here, and basically, uh, what happened is that I walked bed, over here, and I, go out my and I realized to myself that I they are throwing me, axes at Jesus. This is this is the axe throwing building, and this is where the police were. They were up in this building shooting this direction, essentially towards. It's unbelievable to believe this, but basically towards Jesus. If you walk down the street, you can see if they missed and Jesus was walking right here, they could have got him. And basically, right here, and and we don't really know what's going on, okay? And basically. Uh, you know, you're hearing what's going on in the background right now, right? And basically, uh, you know, we have to rethink about what we're talking about in terms of conflict, global conflict, uh, immediately, right? Uh, they're trying to get Jesus. They're trying to do all these crazy things. How long have you been having encounters with this? Uh, I guess neighbor you know, we need we away. need to think about it, right? Uh, and these are no, these are neighbors, these are people that live backyard. here, and we he basically have a situation where, you know, I, it's crazy. Uh, I, I walked down Main Street, there's no one there. Okay, uh, we're all on computers. We're and, listening to uh, I guess that, um, you know, look at the situation right now, right? Like we have essentially a terrible situation, right? Where and the basically, in, um, we need to rethink about everything. So, uh, essentially, if this well, uh, if this got bad, it could have been really bad. And thank God, up. you know, they didn't. Uh, so uh, no, nothing terrible happened. But bedroom. the honest truth is, they have arrested uh, White see. Gandhi. Uh, he's in jail right now. I don't want to show you the actual pictures. Uh, it's really embarrassing to think about it. Uh, imagine if you were sitting in jail, how terrible this would be. 
they have put millions of people in jail. And in fact, there's probably billions of people on our planet in jail right now. Um, we have major catastrophe going on uh, with nuclear power and uh, nuclear weapons, right? So we have the two largest countries with nuclear weapons right now, Russia and the United States, essentially in conflict with each other. We have China and Korea uh, having serious problems, and we have India and Pakistan. Uh, so no matter who you think about it, the situation is absolutely terrible. And I wanted to let you know that, you know, I have friends that are in, and this is scary. I have friends that I've never seen again. They've gotten involved in the military and I've never seen them again. They've completely disappeared. There's many people that I know who've gone, who completely disappeared from this town. Uh, they've taken them into jail, like White Gandhi, and they've disappeared entirely. I know, I, I called the, contacted the police department. I asked them. Where, where are these people? We, we did signs in the street, uh, you know, right in Friendship Square. I, I did a thing and the, the police took it down. You know, I said, like, where, 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 where is, uh, you know, where are these people? Like, what has happened to them? You know, and, and even in, in, in many cases, they, they've kept them there uh, almost indefinitely, right? And, and, and the problem is not just uh, people, you know, it's, it's actually... It's actually organized war, right? They're, they're, these people have nuclear bombs. Okay, it's extremely serious. And honestly, I'm not even making it sound serious enough. Uh, because if this is actually Jesus Christ and they could have got him, you know, it, it could have been, it, you know, it, it, the honest truth is that you know, it, it, you know, Gandhi wants to die. Jesus, Jesus is like in terrible situation. You know, he's he has cancer. You know, there, there's so many things I can't even talk about, right? So, but basically, the point here is that uh, we really got to rethink about this. So, what I did uh, is I took some pictures uh, of the town, and I looked at all the fault lines in our town uh, today because basically this is how the earth really works, right? This is a picture of the local church and all the faults right there. Uh, this is all the pictures, right? I got maybe, maybe 50 or so pictures to go through here. What? Uh, Before last but basically, we want to talk about this very differently, no, right? Because this is a scary situation because if Russia is at war with the United States and they basically annihilate each other, everyone in the military needs to essentially give up on the military. If you're in the military right now, I have friends I've never seen again. My neighbor died. I, I can't even explain where he died. I can't give you the exact details because it's just out of bounds terrible. Uh, you know, he was a very nice guy. He was always very peaceful. He needed money to get into the military, and so that was his job, right? And basically, he was always the quietest guy in the room. I thought there's no way that this guy's going to get into trouble. But he ended up dying, and All it's right. very serious. Another friend um, of mine, he was, to, uh, I, and I hate to say it um, like this, but, this you know, he used to, like, uh, bite a knife, and he was, like, just, like, a really tough guy, and he, he wanted to get into or, the Marines, um, and or like I don't know what happened to him, fry, right? And I have several, I, it's a really bad situation, yeah, right? Um, and and like if you know, think about it with Korea... Uh, and, and, and look at what, what, what has happened with World War One and Two. We're talking millions and millions of people have died, right? And it's just, I talked to the Lord, and you may think this is just kind of funny or whatever, but I talked with the, our Lord and Savior, and I realized to myself that when you talk to the Lord and it's Judgment Day, and there's any kind of problem, when someone points a gun at your face, like right now, for instance, you listen to them and you say, man, yeah. you're not going to get into trouble. We're, so we're not going to cause trouble. That. And that's how it is talking with the Lord and Savior in the end times. Like, this is very serious. We absolutely have to support Thank peace. You. Uh, if you're, and, and I want to tell you a crazy story about what happened is that, uh, I'll tell you that story at the end of this uh, about exactly what happened during this whole discussion. I'm going to keep it going because we absolutely can't listen to the way that I talk about this. It has to be a very complicated topic conflict okay. um it's not easy to talk Thank about you. and that was moscow resident uh, Sierra Valentine, apparently who they're they're Jackson stopping the conversation here the moscow barber shop out of uh, her house i don't know she if he's going to keep talking but KRFP this we'll try to keep it shot at 
by uh, a man who anyway, was so arrested after a... What, what I was going to first start by telling Moscow. you is this. And you're listening is to that AR basically my perception is that it has to do with... It, we can actually. I sat down with with someone today, and we talked about the topic. An and basically, and uh, we we really voters in the we need a. District last week I'm really sorry. This is local news, but here's the thing, right? Conflict might be very different than what we think, right? In terms of what is going on spiritually, uh, and basically, uh, we need to rethink about how to get along. And like I said in earlier in this conversation, there has to be absolutely no question about peace and getting along and doing good. Um, it is very dangerous out there. And if you're thinking of traveling anywhere in the world, the world may not work anything like you think. You could fly somewhere and it could be absolutely disastrous. And we want to avoid all conflict, all problems uh, immediately, right? Especially in our local town. We've had very serious problems uh, and if there's any representative, what's going on here, what, what I'd uh, explain to you is that I'm going to explain some things at the end of this, but essentially this is a food map, right, of where uh, serious both population and food, right? And you can basically see I, I've kind of tried to outline what's going on here, um, but I wanted to emphasize that pollution, it really starts with something abstract, right? How much plastics do you use? How much glass do you use? How much waste do you produce, right? That's the start of the conflict, right? So uh, I'll, I'll try to tell my story right now, but, you know, the the, 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 the police, you know, they, 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 they broke into the apartment. I was terrified, you know, and I, I didn't want them to come in here because I knew that they would just start shooting or something terrible would happen. And so they, they came in anyway, and then... Um, Anyway, I'm not going to talk about it right now, but what, what I want to essentially start this conversation is that the pollution is where we need to start, right? And actually with the wildlife, right? So we have actually killed off, and this is going to be the scariest part of the conversation. I don't mean to say anything rude to anybody, but essentially India and China has killed off all the wildlife. Um, and it's actually happened in West Africa. And this is going to be a radically new conversation because slavery... Essentially, if you're going to kill off all the, the, the wildlife in your country, there's a very serious problem here. This is very great climate. There's Think about think about 100 years ago or 1,000 years ago. All of the United States had trees. If you drive through the Midwest, it's all farmland now. They've killed out all the animals, all the trees. Everything has been cut down in the United States. That problem is bad in the United States. It's even worse in India and even worse in China. They've completely taken down all. Everything is gone. There's no more wildlife here. Absolutely none in West Africa. You see how this is all red? That's essentially the Amazon jungle. It used to be all red here, all red here, all red here, and mostly all red in China as well. So basically that means that they've completely just devastated. The, the, the war has actually been against the animals. It starts by actually right here in town. You drive outside of town and you see the way they're treating the cows and the chickens. They're basically brutalizing them. They, they put them in the worst possible situation. If there's no grass anymore on the cow farm, they, they just pack the thing with cows and the cows trample all the grass. They eat everything out and they put them in small cages and then kill them. That's not the way to treat anyone. As animals, and, and actually there's mil one of the scary things is there's more people in jail right now in the United States than there is in some st entire states. So that, that's an unbelievable fact. We, we've not only, we put people in cages, we put animals in cages. It, it's, it's terrible what has happened, right? And these are the last little bits of Africa that are left. It used to be all red in here. I can't, you know, and, and, and India is even worse scenario too. So, and especially in Southeast Asia, you can see all these circled areas. They're all great climate, and yet it's been entirely populated, heavily populated in Java, heavily populated in the Philippines. This is because it's not very populated, but it's still huge amounts of population. We're talking about billions of people. So that war is very complex. What I wanted to emphasize here, and hopefully I can talk about it in more detail, is exactly how this starts, right? And it actually starts in some places like the United States, the United Nations in the United States. If there is a lot of pollution, 
for instance, here you can see the pollution is actually in New York City. That ends up being Chicago, ends up being Louisiana, ends up being Mexico, which is a huge source of pollution right in Mexico City. Shocking amount. And that heads into Venezuela, and that eventually goes into the Amazon. Um, so same thing goes here, West Africa. You can basically see this is some of this is is, is actually sand. Um, but anyway, I was very surprised to see how important the south side of the jungle is here. And one of the reasons for these pockets of is there's no airflow in the jungle. Actually, what happens is that the jungle is so fragile that there's no wind. So one of the reasons that the jungle is so great is because there's no wind and the animals that can't move very much aren't blown out of their own habitats and they actually can stay there. So if there is pollution in the jungle, it ends up just staying in the jungle. So a lot of this from Nigeria uh, and also over here in Rwanda and Uganda, if there's air pollution in there, it will stay in the jungle for a very long time. And you definitely see that in India and in China. This is for sure huge pockets if you didn't know about this pocket this is something that we should definitely discuss so everything that we buy is mainly made in china i went to the hardware store the other day i was shocked i couldn't find anything except for made in china so it's also the americans are buying products from china so anyway this explains some of the complexities and basically starting in Beijing here, and then you go to Shanghai, and then you go over here to Hong Kong, and then Hong Kong goes down to Vietnam, Thailand, Thailand goes to Sumatra, and then it ends here, doesn't even end here, but Java being a very significant point, point, point because all of this should be wildlife, right? And basically it's all populated. So, uh, and you can see here in India, actually New Delhi is a huge source. A surprising truth is is Pakistan here being a huge player in the pollution side, primarily because they're so close to the Middle East. You can see the Middle East and then heading in here, actually Ethiopia being a back door into the jungle. And then you kind of get in through here. So, and then up here you can see uh, Egypt and definitely Europe has huge pockets, maybe even more so than the United States. That's because the mountain range, you can see Italy here, parts of Spain actually getting into the ocean here. And I just heard a horror story about Greece today recently um, from someone and actually uh, up here in Amsterdam. And, there, and actually the situation is far worse in Europe because the entire Mediterranean, the entire Baltic Sea has no fish anymore. So there's no fish. There's no fishing boats. There's nothing left in the whole Mediterranean and the Baltic Sea. So the fishing problem is becoming very serious and I didn't have access to data uh, for the fish to show how bad that problem is. So again, if you're in the military or you're a police officer, definitely we want to try to support people. However, the scary story is they dropped a couple guns in the apartment here. Uh, and during the shooting, you know, I, I had to use the bathroom, you know, many times. Uh, you know, they're pointing a gun at me as I'm taking a dump and uh, out the window and uh, the guy left his gun on the ground and I'm just like, so what am I supposed to do? Pick up the gun and just start saying, everybody get out of here. Like we don't want to have any more fighting. You know, see, it doesn't work. The problem actually becomes we all have to say we need peace, even the military and even the police department. Um, but what I want to emphasize here is that this is the pollution map primarily from humans, right? It's carbon dioxide. This is the wildlife map, and I did not explain it well enough here, but basically West Africa is a huge point as well as India. So the problem is there was even more wildlife. This is closer to the equator. So actually, even though it shows a little more wildlife in here, that's because they haven't completely destroyed it yet, but it was all red at one point, just as India was all red at one point. And even Madagascar is becoming a huge point. Uh, it's not directly on the equator, but it's very much a vital ground here, as well as down here in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, and that's not to say Bolivia is super important. And this is why we're looking at Ecuador and Peru as being very vital, because that is black backdoor. And as you can see, Venezuela has already completely destroyed a lot of the wildlife through this other door, as well as Colombia uh, going through there. And you can see basically Mexico City has basically wiped out the center of this, whereas you see some wildlife off through here. And um, so 
and this doesn't even explain the ocean. The, the reason this is all blue here, it should have been 100% red, um, is because of population. Cuba is very populated. Haiti, Puerto Rico, all that has been populated. These should be bright red. <laughs> it should be bright red like this. All of these islands should have been bright red. They're not. So that's a very big warning sign that how does this war begin? It begins because we're not treating animals correctly. If I'm a vegetarian, what I'd recommend, you're in the military. One of the reasons I never eat meat is because, man, I have a lot of, it's it's bad, right? People have died and, 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 and probably in ways that are not even, I can't even discuss, right? So I do not eat meat at all, right? Um, and basically, I definitely recommend you consider that because the treatment of animals is not acceptable. People, even with their dogs, I'm, I'm not able to get a dog because I have to feed it way better food now. And I'm scared, you know. Um, but basically, uh, this is a food diagram. And you can basically see Nigeria here. This is all turning. If you look at India, it's entirely filled in here. That means there's all population or farmland, even in Europe very heavily it, it, this does not explain it how bad it is so these blue areas are high contingent points so if we look at the conflict with wildlife it basically is going to go back to these two areas as well as the amazon jungle in here so i probably should have circled another area as being extremely important and that is basically the amazon here and the entire congo and it's just different the Congo actually should be the Congo should should have been bigger. A lot of people consider the Amazon bigger than the Congo, but the truth is, if you included West Africa, this portion plus the Congo should have been bigger, and you actually have all of India that should have been very wildlife centered, but it's not. So, and and there's even more terrible things going on. I expect heavy problems in Indonesia here because. What's going on here is that there's so many people in Java that they're moving the capital to this island. This island is all forest. So what's going to happen is they're going to convert all the wildlife here is going to die off. And they're basically going to make it into farmland. It's already happening in the north side and the south side, as you can see. But when they move the capital there, it's going to be disastrous. So it's basically inevitable. So part of the problem is they need to reforest Java. So it's just getting everyone needs to move out of Java it's a very tough problem and this is going to basically cause potentially could cause the war in korea and the south china sea you probably hear from china a lot about the south china sea and actually the international space station is going to be being built right here in china right in hunan island so it basically means that this move of indonesia is really what could trigger some very complicated problems with korea japan and mainland china and further not to mention myanmar being a huge point of conflict. And that's actually where all the wildlife is on the wildlife map. If you look at this, you can see this is all wildlife right here. And actually, guess where the most conflict is in right now is, is actually in Myanmar and Afghanistan, up in here and, and Pakistan. And that's they completely wiped out the wildlife. It's almost impossible for them to think about it at this point. And you can see India is basically pushed all the wildlife back into here. And if you think it's there's a lot of wildlife here, it should have been everywhere in India. Uh, but it's not. So, uh, and this is very terrifying right here. This is a huge point of contingence because the soil maps, and I'm not explaining this correctly, but the diversity of climate, and actually that's why Colombia is so important in this discussion, is that there's a lot of hot spots in here that you can see that where there is a lot of wildlife and actually every dot here means 1,209 species within a little pixel area. That means there's a lot of different wildlife there. So basically there should have been filled in gaps. It should have been bright red all in here, all the way up into Florida and, and actually right along here, right? Because Florida basically is all just a gigantic city along the coast now. One interesting thing about Florida, there's only like one or two mangrove trees in downtown Miami. And you should really take a look at that. If you've been to Miami, you can see how devastated. By just looking at one of those trees, there are historical landmarks. Downtown Miami, if you're in America, you should definitely check a look at that. Um, but you can imagine just the vastness of the wildlife that would have been here and should have been here. So we have devastated completely. That's, that's, the, that's the war right there. So... No matter how we talk about it. I'm going to pause this video for a moment. Uh, 
and we're gonna go through and look at all these cracks. So what, what I did is I took the Main Street and I walked down Main Street and took a picture of all the major cracks. Um, and what I wanted to emphasize is that uh, we can start to understand these. So uh, what I wanted to say is that this is how the earth understands. We can use these these to spiritually understand and logically understand what the earth is communicating to us about what has happened here, right? And each one of these shows very detailed things. So the interesting thing is this is long-term impact and this is also short-term. This pole may be 50 years old uh, and this crack may be uh, actually even newer, but it actually shows us deeper stuff into the earth uh, here. And you can see this is the bank entrance and the trash can here and some other things. So there's a lot of details. This showed up upside down, but this is pointing up a hill right into Main Street. And you can see just all the detail here. And it really takes, we could actually study this logically and start to say what is going on here. What is it pointing to? What does it mean uh, in detail? And you can see some oil spots in here. Uh, all of this tells us a lot about what is really going on. Um, here you can see a very interesting crack. This is a farmer that owns this building here. His name is Farmer Phil. He owns an actual orchard that he's provided to the public. Uh, but you can see the crack here kind of going to that door with another mysterious crack here. And there's these different types of cracks that I wanted to talk about. Um, but here's around the water uh, sanitary thing. And this may tell us some very interesting things uh, because it's actually sewage. Uh, on our thing. So here you can see Mingles and the pool hall and kind of the crosswalk as well as some other details. Um, and here's another bank shot. This is what started it for me. Uh, I found, I've been, I've been studying cracks for like 10 years or more. I, I'm very careful with where I walk uh, and details like that because I really take it very seriously uh, spiritually about the earth. So, uh, but what I would say is that these types of things are very interesting to look at. We see these in the ocean, in the bathymetric imagery of the ocean. And let me see if I can get that for you really quickly here. I'm sorry about this. Uh, please forgive me on the slowness of all this discussion, but uh, I'm sorry about this. So, uh, hold on a second. So sorry about this. So. Essentially, what we see here is there's some a diamond shape here. This is the Mariners Trench. This is the biggest trench in the planet. Some of these shapes show up at a microscopic level on the cracks. So you're going to start to see, oftentimes I'll think about the entire Earth with just a simple little crack on the ground. So I just wanted to mention that as a detail there. So uh, all of these can be looked at um, from a small spiritual perspective as well as a vast spiritual perspective. Now here you can see kind of where the line created by humans was kind of interacting with the other one here. This goes into a real estate company, which is also a thrift store. Here's the main coffee shop in town and you can see it kind of almost bypasses the coffee shop heading over to the art shop and further down. Here is a very interesting crack because it headed towards the tree and you can see how it's a little bit off centered and kind of heading off to this oil spot and here's a major drain to the local stream. This actually drains directly into the stream. Our stream stinks in town. You can hear the dog yelling next door. It is one of the most fury, infuriating things about my whole entire town. A friend of mine visited from China and I walked him down the entire stream and I just said to him again and again, our stream stinks. I'm sorry about this. I can't believe that our town could let the water in our stream smell so bad. Anyway, this is another crack that you can see splitting off, kind of heading out there. Um, all of this should be really detailedly studied, but I just wanted to go through this quickly with you. I want to get to the more important ones further down here. Uh, but uh, what I did is I looked at near the hospital as well as uh, the, I'm sorry about this. So. Uh, this is getting off towards the co-op. So this is a crosswalk, major crosswalk in town. And you can see some details there. Um, kind of a bike path, a garbage can where there was a mysterious crack to that. That was a major recycling point. Here is our theater. 
sorry about this to go through this so quickly, but I just didn't want to bore people with the details. So here is our local fire station, and you can see uh, I try to take some detailed shots here, and you can kind of connect the picture spiritually by interpreting this. So what I wanted to emphasize to you is that, yes, you can do a mathematical analysis, use image processing, do all kinds of algorithmic studies on this, but ultimately it's really nice to just look at it yourself and do a spiritual understanding because you're right there, the wind is blowing, you got the weather for that particular day to help you. There's all kinds of other factors that really matter. These people walking by that instant tells you something at that instant about what's going on spiritually in that particular situation. And here you can see more there. So I'm moving down closer to the uh, hospital now. now. Here's one of the first images of the hospital. This is a very reputable building. It has some of the most cracks in the entire area are located down by our hospital. This is the infant place. It's called the uh, pediatric center. And you can see uh, some of the details there. And every little detail matters. Don't let anyone tell you that you're thinking about things not correctly spiritually. Try to just learn from what you think about it spiritually. This is where it gets extremely interesting. Behind the kids' doctor area is actually the grain center as well as over here is where they make the seeds. This has millions and even over the decades, uh, possibly billions of dollars. Um, so here you can just see the vastness of all the cracks right by the hospital. We didn't see this anywhere else. And a lot of people say just fill this in. It's all historical record that we really need to understand. We should not be filling it in until we understand every single crack. Here you can see the sanitary also heading off into the grain area. So you can see some details there. And I wanted to zoom in, but it's really nice to stand here yourself and just study like, okay, this crack goes down to Main Street. This heads over to the dialysis center. This is heading out to the grain. What does it all mean spiritually and logically? And here you can see more this is actually the conference center, so if you're thinking of having a conference there, what are the cracks that are leading to that? And what I wanted to emphasize, like a crack is both a good thing and a bad thing, right? Because basically it cracks our logical experience. We wanted this all flat, but the earth said it's not going to be flat. It's actually going to be something else. It created a whole new section. So this is actually telling us partly about the truth of what the earth wants. So here you can see heading off to the light pole and then the hospital as well. Um, and then more pictures here. Um, we're getting towards the emergency room here. Now this is the old center and you can see this crack here. And it's just, all of it is super important. It's beyond, this one is a hilarious one. I call this the Idaho crack. I'm gonna, I'm gonna outline this one so you can see it. Look at how funny this one is. This is the shape of guess what? Idaho. I think this one should never be covered up. We should definitely, I think they even tried to make it look like Idaho, but it's Idaho if we flip this around. Let me just, I'm really sorry about this transform. Uh, yeah, so you can basically see, I'd have to flip it the other way too. Oh, the emergency room is back here. So you can see this crack here, the emergency room and heading out there. This kind of makes me think like, if you're going to the emergency room, you probably shouldn't be in Idaho. You should consider somewhere else. That's what this would mean to me spiritually. It's like, well, if you had the problem here, then you should be in Idaho. Here's the dialysis center. Some very weird things have happened to me here. Uh, I have someone that I know uh, personally that has only one kidney. And I mysteriously parked my car here on accident one day. And the guy was trying to pull in. He was like honking at me and waving at me. And I like talk, what's your problem? He's like, I'm going to the dialysis center. I'm like, oh my God, I think I maybe know someone that used to go to the dialysis center. So that was a really interesting spiritual experience. Uh, and you can see the emergency room here, more details. All of this can tell you something very interesting. Uh, not only about the distance of this might tell you how far uh, the concept is, uh, as well as really important baby details uh, on that. So here's some brand new asphalt. And I noticed just some slight deterioration on this as well as a brand new crack. This is this was created like only a couple years ago and yet we already have cracks here going right to the water, which is super interesting. And then maybe a actual 
man-made problem here. And you can see another crack heading here. This is going around the back side of the hospital. I'm sorry to go through these so quickly, but I posted these. Some of these are not shown yet. I recommend you just trying to take a look. Also, you can see the vastness of the respiratory. A lot of people die from heart attacks. And you can just see how complicated all that is there. Um, and unfortunately, I really should have looked at a lot more. And I tried to spend, you know, just an hour or more trying to look at these cracks heading towards the green center. It's just hard to explain how interesting these were. And this is the plumbing. So interestingly enough, the plumbing company is located right next to the green center. You can just see the green is actually out that way. And this is heading right to the plumbing company. They're the main plumbing company. And they own a lot of real estate. And you can just see the crack. And then right across from the plumbing company is, guess what, the hospital. So all and then just the the crack heading right down the center of main street with the split off out to the hospital as well here and you can see just handicap sign and then just heading right into the grain silo and just more look at how straight that crack was right into the just almost hitting perfectly right on that line and you can just see that this is the kids hospital the grain this is the grain one and then the kids hospital breaking off there and then just heading in to details and this whole building here being so important as well it was so important that they didn't even put asphalt uh, and you can just see this was an amazing crack right by the grain silo just heading right in here and this is all the kids hospital side just splitting out into this building um, and there's more grain silo and you can see that the the rock is just amazingly shifted on the sidewalk along the side here uh, and just some amazing details another shot of the water drain and just so many important ones I could go it's just super important so here also this is the seeds and I wanted to show just the detail here out towards a seed company this is a very mysterious company we don't see anyone working there hardly ever and so important to all of the food. Um, we've abandoned the, the, the grain silos. It's maybe even next to abandon this, this too, but you can see how that's just related to cars and this company right there. Uh, and you can just see some of this rock, you can start to see shifting up here and just kind of coming in through here. Sorry to get so many details. I love this little tree here. It's just a brand new tree that we've just planted. And you can see it's kind of cute there, but um, and just the back side of this building. And actually, this really scared me. The Banner Bank. It's such a weird name for a bank, but why would you ever call a bank Banner Bank? It was it was about money and it. Then the crack, losing this whole grain silo was maybe related to Banner Bank, but it's just really crazy concept. We we almost this this is one of the nicest locations in our town and no one ever goes in or out and it's just basically a bank that no one uses so anyway and here's the handicap sign right at the bank you can see the funny name banner bank uh and just some other stuff so and that that was about it so i, I wanted to look at this is the walk one of the cracks that you see as you're walking home as a student and I just, uh, even a small little crack like that was really important because everyone deals with that. Further down the street, there's a map of the earth that I always let, love to look at. It's right outside the uh, Moscow, I, I forgot what it's called, but it, further down the street there, across from the green, there, there's a map on the earth on the same side of the street, which is just, I really like a lot. Here you can see the sewage. A local newspaper reporter working right there, but you can just see what's going on. So, uh, and then looking back at the bank again and the alley and some other details. So I'm really sorry if we've gone through this too fast or too slow or whatever, but uh, rethink about how we think about conflict um, and really start to understand what's going on. Like everything really matters. Let's listen to the, you know, I, I can't even explain it well enough, but uh, you know, there's just all these pictures that we've just looked at, and I'm really sorry. Uh, you know, this is our main street in our town, and 
it's so important to think about all this. So some of these some of these early cracks you can see are just hundreds of feet long. I don't know how much effort it would take to move this concrete, but we're talking about thousands and even millions of pounds of concrete that we've just looked at on all these images. There's just so much mass involved in all of these and all that um, it's just shocking but it really is detailed so that's all i'm going to talk about thank you so much for listening to the details here and i hope you've enjoyed uh looking at this and hopefully you'll have a really fun time trying to help out right like and honestly uh the last point i wanted to make you know if you're in the military in the police department i have some personal experience with friends they are absolutely terrified you know they some of the some of the police officers, you know, they put so many people in jail. They they just want to get out of town. They they want to give up on their job entirely. And we need people on both sides. And we need, but we need to really start saying that if you think you've done something wrong, maybe you have. You know, and no matter if you're on the side of law enforcement or in the military, uh, maybe we just need to drop the guns and really rethink about our strategy entirely. Um, we have essentially five five thousand nuclear warheads, more than 5,000 nuclear warheads in the United States. We have more than 5,000 nuclear warheads in Russia. Uh, <laughs> we have hundreds of nuclear warheads in India, in Pakistan, in China. We need to zero all that out um, and really start to rethink about this. And it really starts by really understanding all these details right here. I'm really thankful. I hope, I pray that we really try to, um, you know, solve, talk about this, pray about this, and really work peacefully. And again, um, you know, if you have to have a conversation with the Lord and Savior, I'll say go for it. Um, but remember, it is not a time to joke around. Um, when you're actually in a really difficult situation, you could have seconds to talk about peace, and that's all you can talk about. There's not any discussion about it. And if this is true, we've radically destroyed. This all used to be red. There's some serious problems that we really need to think about. Um, thank you so much.